Hello, hello. Happy Monday and welcome to Making Waves. I'm your host, Moana, a teenage girl with a lot to say and a lot more to learn. Ah, we're back. I'm so excited and ah, I am definitely going to be a little rusty today. First episode back and with the new name. But today we're talking about self-love and I'm also going to go over all the changes that we're making. But today we're talking about self-love and I went through all of my past episodes on self-love and self-love related topics to bring you the ultimate guide to falling in love with yourself. So the first change that I'm making is obviously you saw the name and if you follow the podcast Instagram you've probably seen how the feed is starting to shift which I'm I'm so excited about the Instagram feed. It's going to look so good when like after a couple of weeks once I've been posting. I'm so excited about that but One of the big changes I'm making to the actual episodes is we're combining currently loving and gratitude into one. It just felt too repetitive. They're too similar. And so we're going to call it our current obsession. Now, it's staying as a current because I'm going off of a lot of ocean puns and really embracing the waves and the ocean. And it's just always been really important to me, especially with my name. It just goes so well together so current obsession my current obsession is priscilla if you haven't seen it it is a must watch i've watched it three times in the last 24 hours my mom and i rented it yesterday i had been like telling her all week like can we watch priscilla now like let's get it let's watch it and she hadn't really like seen a lot about it and we watched it she fell asleep the first time so then we re-watched it a second time last night and then i watched it again today on my own that is my current obsession. It's so good. I love the fashion and the way it shifts throughout the movie. And I love that it tells her story. And I really want to read the book now. Um, I think it's called Elvis and Me that she wrote. Um, but yeah, I am I love it so much. It's really good. And then our second thing is going to be High Tide. And High Tide is going to be a book, podcast, TED Talk, creator, something like that, that is self-help, motivational, that's going to be an energy giver for you. So if you hear me out and go read, watch, listen to, look into High Tide, like that is going to give you a boost of motivation and energy because like that's what it's there for. Today's High Tide is The Mountain Is You by Brianna Weist and it's W-I-E-S-T feist i um was telling somebody yesterday how much i love the book and, I, and she was like who is it by and i'm like brianna weist and i didn't realize she was german so or at least her name is german but it's brianna weist and so yeah it's really great it's about self-sabotage and it goes into a lot of unique um it gives a lot of unique explanations of pretty basic things and I think she is a really great writer especially if you don't like self-help she's really easy to follow and the book is actually super short um it doesn't look super short but there's not very many words on each page and she breaks it up really well to where it's clean and simple and easy to read she uses really good metaphors and analogies that make it really easy to understand things and there's a couple of different exercises in there if you do them, you might cry. I did. They're tough. But it's so, so, so worth the read. And I'm actually about to start reading her other book, 101 Essays That Will Change the Way You Think. And that is a much longer, heavier read. So when I'm done with that, I will let you know how it is. But let's get into the episode because I'm so excited about this. It's self-love February! I I love self-love February. It's... Uh, I I just, I love it so much, and we're going to talk about it more later, but let's just get started, okay? So welcome to Self Love 101, and you know, I always like to start off with, like, what is it? In all my episodes, I always want to give a good explanation of what we're talking about, like a real, true definition. So what is self love? I feel like to really understand what self love is, you have to first understand what it's not, because there's a lot of... There's a lot of, I don't 
think the word is stereotype, but like maybe it is stereotype or stigma, something like that. I can't quite put my finger on the word, but there's a lot of people who think something is self-love when that's not really what it is. So what is self-love not? It is not retail therapy. It is not constant pampering, you know, nails, hair, makeup. Having self-love does not make you self-centered, arrogant, cocky, egocentric, egotistical, vain, or conceited. And it does not come naturally to most people. But what is self-love is it's understanding your value and your worth, having a high level of self-respect, self-awareness, self-esteem, and self-worth, having kindness and compassion towards yourself, having the ability to forgive yourself when you make a mistake and then learn from that mistake, practicing self-care, being patient with yourself, showing up for yourself, setting healthy boundaries, appreciating yourself for who you are, investing in your own growth, and it's something that takes practice and hard work. Okay, so self-love is a lot of things, but I really want you to pay attention to that last bit. It takes practice and hard work. It does not come naturally to most people. So no matter where you are in your self-love journey, there are so many other people in that same place as you. So what are the steps to self-love? I listed off a couple of these I said having a high level of self-respect, self-awareness, self-esteem, and self-worth. And that is kind of what we're going to be talking about step-wise. So self-awareness is number one. I always, always, always talk about planning and assessing first. And I think self-awareness is kind of the evaluation part of self-love. We have to evaluate where we are now. How is your relationship with yourself right now? How do you feel about yourself? How do you currently show yourself love? Do you show yourself love? What are your insecurities? What are your strengths? What are your weaknesses? You have to be able to understand your thoughts, emotions, and actions. And then recognize when you make a mistake and being aware of your faults. So think about right now. What are the things that limit you from being able to really appreciate yourself and love yourself? What are the insecurities that are holding you back from that? Or what are the things that you spend so much time contemplating and overthinking and overanalyzing and critiquing of yourself? And how are your current habits affecting the way you feel about yourself? How is social media affecting the way you feel about yourself? And what are the specific things that are holding you back? Social media, I think, is a big one for a lot of people. And I have an episode coming up soon that is going to be all about how to stop comparing. So I'm not going to go too deep into this. But it's pretty self-explanatory that when we're on social media, we compare and we get insecure and we feel like we're not enough. But other habits, negative self-talk toxic behaviors, being aware of the toxic people you're letting stay in your life, all of these things, and then also, like I said, recognizing when you make a mistake and being aware of your faults. It's okay to make mistakes. We all know this in the back of our head. And it's okay to have faults. You're not perfect, period. Nobody is. But you have to put in the effort and be willing to put in the effort And be aware of how much effort you're currently putting in to improve in those areas. When you make a mistake, if you don't learn from it, it's pointless. All you did was mess up. But if you make a mistake and you do learn from it, you forget about the mistake and take the lesson. So it's really important to be aware of all of these things. Again, insecurities, strengths, weaknesses, mistakes, faults, negative behaviors that are affecting the way you feel about yourself, negative self-talk, toxic behaviors, those kinds of things, you have to first assess. And to do this, just think about 
times when you felt like you weren't enough or you hated yourself or you felt like you didn't deserve something that you did or that you weren't worthy? What are the things in that moment? What were the causes or the triggers that started you thinking like that? And did you do anything to change it? Did you stop yourself and be like, whoa, why am I feeling like this? Hold on. Or did you just feel that way and feel like crap and let yourself be in a negative space? Once you have an understanding of why you're feeling this way, the mistakes you're making, the places that you need to improve in, then you can move on to self-esteem. Self-esteem is the number one thing is keeping promises to yourself. Keeping promises to yourself is the number one way to build self-confidence. You have to be able to trust yourself to do the things you say you're going to do. Because then you have confidence that you are going to follow through and that you get things done. Even the smallest things, like I'm going to go to bed at 9, at, that's really early, I'm going to go to bed at 10 tonight. Go to bed at 10 tonight, period. No questions asked. You have to build that trust with yourself to have self-confidence and high self-esteem. And you don't have to do big things. Choose something that is simple and that you know you can do and try to choose something you can do every day. Habit stacking goes really well with this. If you want to challenge yourself more and do more than one thing, but just pick one thing and say, I'm going to do blank every single day and do it. Make sure that it is something that is timely and measurable, right? We're taking things from smart goals like we learn in school, but a great example is super simple, so easy. I know you can do this. I'm going to read one page a day. You say that to yourself. I'm going to read one page a day and you do it. No questions asked. You do it. You find the time right before bed, right when you wake up, when you're eating, it doesn't matter. You read one page. That's it. One page a day and you do it every single day and you do it and you tell yourself you're going to do it and then you actually do it. You are building that trust with yourself. That's going to build your self-confidence and you are going to have so much more confidence with other people and around other people and it's going to build your self-esteem and once you do that you have to appreciate yourself and the effort you put in even if you fail even if you miss a day even if you miss one day that's not a big deal all you're supposed to do is read one page it's okay you messed up you missed a day you didn't read the page it's okay think about all the days before that the 5, 10, 15, 30 days that you did read the one page before that, all that effort you put in, it's not gone. You did great, and now today you're going to read again. It was one day. It's okay. You have to be able to appreciate yourself in the positives and the negatives, in the highs and the lows, in the wins and the losses, because that's what's going to keep your self-esteem high. Even because even if you're constantly failing over and over and over and over again, if you still appreciate the effort that you put in, that's not going to break your self-confidence. It's only going to build it up because you know that even when you try things and you fail, you can still believe in yourself to try again to do something else. Number three is self-worth. You have to understand your value and what you offer. What do you bring to the table? The strengths that we talked about earlier, you can do a SWOT analysis. You can look it up. It's a pretty simple exercise. But when you list those strengths, if you don't know what you bring to the table, those strengths are what you bring to the table. Because you are worthy of your dream life and achieving your goals. You are worthy of your dream life and achieving your goals. You deserve love, happiness, health, and wealth. You just have to get there. You're just not there yet. It's really important to put your happiness and mental health above other things and make it a priority. Your mental health is more important than your grades and more important than other people's feelings and opinions. You are worthy of your dream life and achieving your goals. It is not up to you to fulfill the ideas 
that other people have of you in their heads and the futures that they have planned out for you in their own heads. It is about what you want because you are worthy. It is not your responsibility to fulfill other people's ideas and ideal futures for you that they have in their own heads. It is your responsibility to fulfill your goals and achieve the things that you want to achieve and the things that you want to do. When it comes to relationships and self-worth, it's important to, like I said earlier, understand your value and what you offer. If someone can't see how incredible you are and how much you how much value you have and they don't care about your goals, your feelings, your opinions, your abilities, your strengths, they do not need to have access to you. You have to recognize that you are valuable, you have all these strengths, and if they are not treating you with the respect that you deserve, they don't deserve to have access to you and your life and your feelings and your ideas and your opinions. Number four is self-care, which is obviously the most self-explanatory, but it goes a little bit deeper than basic self-care, pampering yourself, yada, yada, yada. Self-care is taking responsibility for both your own physical and mental health. Physical means exercise, nourishment, hygiene, and hydration. And mental is journaling, reading, shadow work, therapy, meditation, etc. Make it a priority to schedule time for self-care and put in the effort. When you schedule it and you set aside time for that, it definitely also helps with the self-esteem aspect because you're following through. You said, I'm going to do this for myself to take care of myself and I'm putting in the effort to get these things done and that is going to boost your self-confidence. Self-care is also making the healthiest choice for yourself. Like I said earlier, it's not about what other people want for you. It's about what you want for you and making decisions that you know are going to keep you the healthiest mentally and physically. Social situations, whether you go or don't go, what is going to protect your mental health the most? What you eat, what's going to protect your physical health the most? And then, of course, setting boundaries. Setting boundaries is hard, especially if you are a people pleaser and want to keep everybody happy. But especially if you are a people pleaser, it's really important because it is such a deep way to care for your own mental health and is so incredibly effective. Definitely setting boundaries, important. Now let's talk about when to practice self-love and how to incorporate it into your day. So I think that the best way to stay consistent with self-love and make sure and make sure that self-love is something that you are consistent with and that continues to grow is by incorporate, incorporating it into your day-to-day because it is something that we need to be working on every day and then it will eventually become a habit. I like to work different practices into my morning and night routine. If you need a little bit of a push to get started, I recommend the Self-Love February Challenge. I'm so excited to talk about this. Self-Love February is something that I heard about at the ripe age of 11 from Caitlin. She has a YouTube channel called Caitlin's Corner and she does like bullet journaling and she always used to make February journal spreads where she would write one thing she loved about herself every day for Self-Love February and it was something that I guess like journaling Instagram community came up with. I'm not sure exactly who it was that started it but it's super simple but so incredibly effective and also a little bit challenging but trust me the push it's so worth it. All you have to do is write one thing you love about yourself each day of the month. I normally just do it on a notepad on my phone like in the notes app I'll make a list and I'll just write one thing every day. This year I'm adding it to my journaling routine so I'm writing it down on paper but I also have a self-love February freebie for you. If you go to moanaadams.com there's a button that says get the free self-love February guide. It has a worksheet for you to write all of your self-love February on it. It has 15 self-love journal prompts, 30 affirmations, 10 self-care ideas, and I think that's it. But it's really cute. I worked really hard on it, so I hope you really like it. But it's just a little freebie that I'm giving out. 
I'm also going to be posting all the self-love February things on the podcasts, TikTok, and Instagram, and on my YouTube. But definitely do self-love February, and it's not too late to start. You really can do it at any point. February is just really great because obviously it's the month of love, and it has the least number of days, so it doesn't make it too out of reach for most people. And then use your love language to practice self-love. I have a full episode on this from last year, Self-Love February, so if you need ideas, definitely go there. But I think it's really important to, if you don't know your love language, go take the test. Just Google love language test. Take it because it's so important to know that. It really helps you understand your own thoughts and feelings and actions and kind of like why you do the things you do and why you feel the way you do when certain people do certain things. So definitely do that, but you can use it to show yourself love. So if your love language is quality time, like me, spending quality time with yourself by going on solo dates, solo movie nights, reading books, those kinds of things, or words of affirmation, working on positive self-talk, you get the idea. Like I said, full episode on it from last year. And then I think cutting out negative self-talk is the best way to feel that shift. And I also have a full episode on that. But if you really are craving something that is going to make you feel like really help you see that shift in self-love and how you feel about yourself and that kind of thing, I think negative self-talk is the number one thing to do because once you've kind of finally started to get past that point where you're not constantly bullying yourself and you're starting to become your number one cheerleader... Like, you can really feel that, and it's so hard to explain because it's something that you just have to feel for yourself. So go listen to that episode. But when I kind of started to change the way I spoke about myself and notice, like, now when I say negative things to myself, I'm like, hold on, Moana. Hold on. Do we really feel like that? Is that true? Or are we just making things up in our own head because we're frustrated or we're not being patient enough with ourselves? You know, what is causing this to where we're like, hold on, you're not dumb, you're not stupid, you're not ugly, you just are feeling certain things right now and you're letting that control your truth and you are believing the things that you feel as if they are fact, not as if they are emotions. So if you really want to feel that shift, go listen to the negative self-talk episode from last year. Now, it's time for our last segment that I'm adding in. And it's homework. I really wanted to make sure that every single episode had an actionable step that you can go right now and add to your life or work on that can really like help kickstart, you know, whatever we're talking about in that episode. So I really wanted to give you something that you can implement right now based on what we discussed. And here's what I got for you today. Start self-love February challenge. Do it right now. This episode is coming out on the fifth, I think. So go in your notes app, title it self-love February, start making a list, one, two, three, four, five, blah, 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 list five things you love about yourself right now. And then every day, maybe set an alarm on your phone or do it at a certain time when you do the same thing every day on your way to school, you know, whatever it is. And just write one thing you love about yourself, physical, mental, emotional, social. So far this month, it's only the third. So I've only written two things yet, but The first one was my hair, and the second one was my ambition. There's a lot of variety of things, and towards the end of the month, it's going to get a little challenging, but I believe in you, and I think that you'll come up with something. And then choose one self-love habit to add to your morning or evening routine. Self-love affirmations, read a self-love book, self-care, journaling, and like I said, journal prompts and affirmations and self-care ideas are all going to be in that guide that I will link in the show notes actually too. So you don't even have to go to moanadams.com. I will just link it in the show notes. And then self-love books. The Mountain Is You is a great self-love book. She talks about it a lot. So definitely go read that book. And that's all I have for you today. I will talk to you later.